Let's all coalesce around Elizabeth Warren. <clears throat> During a, um, a Senate uh, committee hearing, um, rebuking Wells Fargo CEO John Stump. Now, Hillary Clinton um, has already um, put out a statement saying that uh, to support the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and Elizabeth Warren uh, in this regard. She wrote a letter to uh, Wells Fargo's customers. Uh, saying that uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Agency will be protected, uh, I would imagine, under a uh, Trump administration. And as inept as the uh, Republicans are in Congress, they would defund the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau on day one as part of their budget, which would be signed by Donald Trump. As moronic as they are, they already have written up that budget. All Trump would have to do is sign his name. I'm quite sure he's capable of doing that. And if not, I'm sure they have stamps to use the Trump signature that they use for the ties, that they could just bang and do it. Can you just send it to some kid in China to sign today? I'm depressed. Hillary Clinton will not sign legislation that defunds the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau because all of her support, to the extent that she would have any as president, would crumble immediately. And she'll be busy nuking Syria. All right, but here is Elizabeth Warren rebuking CEO John Stumpf. Personally, wasn't it, Mr. Stumpf? Do you know how much money, how much value your stock holdings in Wells Fargo well, pause it for one second. While this I should remind you the context of this is that 5,300 uh, Wells Fargo's employees were fired for basically fraudulently putting, creating accounts of non-customers or customers and putting them into other products. The uh, Wells Fargo was fined uh, between multiple agencies $185 million as a function of this. The CEO, Stumpf, has argued that we got rid of the bad apples. This has nothing to do with our culture here. I can assure you, we had no idea this was going on. I'm shocked, frankly, to hear about it. Personally, I'm wasn't it, Mr. Stump? Do you know how much money, how much value your stock holdings in Wells Fargo gained while this scam was underway? Well, first of all, it was not a scam, and cross-sell is a way of deepening relationships. When customers we've, we've use We've been customers, through this, Mr. Stump. I asked you a very simple it, question. It, Do you know how much the value of your stock went up while this scam was going on? It's all of my compensation is in our uh, uh, public Do filing. Do you know how much it was? It's all in the public filing. All, you're right, it is all in the public records because I looked it up. While this scam was going on, you personally held an average of 6.75 million shares of Wells stock. The share price during this time period went up by about $30, which comes out to more than $200 million in gains, all for you personally, and thanks in part to those cross-sell numbers that you talked about on every one of those calls. You know, here's what really gets me about this, Mr. Stump. Pause it. <laughs> Just to be clear, the cross-sell is we've got this investment account and we also sold them this uh, other financial product. Now, what was happening is the customer never agreed to do the other financial product. They just sold it to them. Those Wells Fargo guys are really onto something. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's Continued. great. Of those calls. You know, here's what really gets me about this, Mr. Stump. <laughs> if one of your tellers took a handful of $20 bills out of the cash drawer, they'd probably be looking at criminal charges for theft. They could end up in prison, but you squeezed your employees to the breaking point so they would cheat customers and you could drive up the value of your stock and put hundreds of millions of dollars in your own pocket. And when it all blew up, you kept your job, you kept your multi-million dollar bonuses, and you went on television 
to blame thousands of $12 an hour employees who were just trying to meet cross-sell quotas that made you rich. This is about accountability. You should resign. You should give back the money that you took while this scam was going on, and you should be criminally investigated by both the Department of Justice and the Securities and Exchange Commission. I think he probably disagrees. I think he's probably thinking, just focus on the money I have. Just focus on the money I have. This is the easiest $200 million you've ever had to make. <clears throat> he went on to say that we had a very, very, uh, a culture where we would open to everybody. We actually even had a hotline where you could call in and report anything that you saw that was untoward in any fashion whatsoever. Well, uh, CNN Money interviewed Bill Batto, a former Wells Fargo banker in Pennsylvania. He's um, a New Jersey uh, man. He called an ethics hotline that they had set up and sent an email to Human Resources in September 2013 flagging unethical sales activities he was being instructed to do. Eight days after that email, a copy of which CNN Money obtained, Batto was terminated. The stated reason? Tardiness. Too busy sending those ethics uh, emails. You I were guess. late because of the ethics complaints that you filed. I think, um, I think we're going to see some more activity here. Also, not being a team player for Stump's uh, bonuses. Yeah. You're off the team. Hey, folks, Sam Cedar here. I just got back from a uh, company-wide meeting. Accounting is really coming down on me hard. We need to get to 100,000 subscribers as soon as possible. So uh, please, enjoy this uh, channel. Subscribe. Right up. Right up. Down. Right down there. <laughs>